about embeddings. Um, so last week we talked about dimensionality reduction, clustering, lane factor models. Uh, particular lane factor models is um, one of the most popular ways to learn a low dimensional representation of data, uh, especially when there's a lot of missing values. And you want to learn a representation that can generalize across uh, even the case where you don't have where you do have missing values. Embeddings, uh, well, to be honest, there's no formal universally agreed upon definition of embeddings. So I'll give you some examples in this lecture. Uh, but uh, given sort of the broad usage of the term, you can think of embeddings as a generalization of latent factor models. And that'll become clear uh, by the end of the lecture. So in this lecture, as a warm up, we'll first look at locally linear embeddings, which is probably, at least at a conceptual level, um, somehow the simplest notion of embeddings, which doesn't even depend necessarily on machine learning. Uh, per se, it's sort of something that's sort of more fundamental than machine learning. And then we'll look into more detail on, um, on uh, probabilistic sequence embeddings, such as playlist embeddings over songs and word embeddings over, over sentences. So these are both sequences of items. Uh, and the word embedding part is on the homework. So an embedding, so the goal of an embedding, like in lane factor models, is to learn some representation matrix in the simplest case, right? Although we'll be looking at uh, representation where we learn more than just a single U. So for example, in factor models, we'll learn both a U and a V. We'll be doing some similar things here. But the basic idea is that we learn a representation over items, right, or data points. And each column of this matrix corresponds to some low dimensional representation that you've learned automatically from this data point that encodes some notion of semantics, okay? And so, you know, the semantics can be encoded either by the distance between two points in this embedding. So if two items uh, that, is, that are associated with U and U prime are far apart, that means they are close together, that means maybe they share some similar semantics. Uh, on the other hand, we can also encode uh, semantics via similarity between points, which is usually uh, formalized as the inner product between those, the corresponding representations, U and U prime of those two data points. Uh, and so this is just a dot product. And so in this sense, uh, this generalizes latent factor models, because latent factor models do the exact same thing. They're just trying to you know, maximize for some regression coefficient, let's say, in the, in the, in the cloud filtering side. So uh, we'll first uh, spend the first uh, a third to a half of lecture talking about local linear banks just as a warm up, because I think it's somehow, at least at a super high level, conceptual level, of the sort of one of the simplest level, versions of the embeddings. And local linear embedding is a straight up dimensionality reduction technique from an observed feature representation. So um, what we're given is a set of training examples of the following form and how each data point is some super high dimensional data point, typically, um, XI. And this is an unsupervised learning problem where we want to learn a representation U such that local linearity is preserved, right? And U is going to be, so, the, so each column of U corresponds to one X. And it's going to be lower dimensional than x, and this is uh, an instance of what's called manifold learning, right? So what is uh, sort of what is one intuitive sort of what, what is one way to intuitively understand local linearity? Well, if we look if this is our training data x, if this is our training distribution, right? Uh, and our training samples x is sampled so iid from this distribution, then our training examples you know, might look something like this. Now, of course, this is just three dimensional. And in practice, x can be very, very high dimensional. But just for visualization purposes, suppose x is three dimensional, we want to learn a two dimensional uh, representation of the x that is such that local linearity is preserved. What does that mean? Well, uh, then let's take a look at the, this black box, which is the neighborhood, which is a local neighborhood around, centered around one of the data points. It's locally linear, and the points are you know, things that are to the left. If you sort of arrange yourself on this, on this manifold, things to your left are these points, and things to your right are these points, and so on and so forth. And we want to map that to, let's say, two-dimensional representation of this, uh, of this object, uh, of this surface, excuse me, that preserves that local linearity property, that the, you know, the relative configurations of your neighbors are preserved in this two-dimensional representation, right? So for those of you who've studied sort of uh, things like uh, manifold geometry, uh, this is just, you know, they, in those cases, people typically just specify a, a sort of a lower dimensional coordinate system that allows you to traverse that, that lower dimensional, uh, a lower dimensional manifold that lives in some high dimensional space. 
here we're trying to sort of learn such a manifold, if you will, we're automatically given samples from this uh, distribution. Okay. So the basic approach to local internet embedding is first we have to formalize what it means to be to, to satisfy the local energy property. And so what that basically boils down to is defining a relationship from each data point in our training set to its neighbors. Right? How does each within the neighborhood of each training example, how are the relative relationships of the data points arranged? Right? Given such a relationship that we've defined, now we want to find a lower dimensional representation of each X and U that preserves that relationship, right? In, in the Netflix problem of collaborative filtering, uh, we wanted to find a U that preserves the relationship of ratings, right? One or, that preserves the rating score. Here we're trying to preserve some notion of local linearity. You know, that'll become more formal in a couple of the slides. Okay, so step one is we want to form, we want to define a relationship between X and T to its numbers. Right? So before we can talk about an embedding, so an embedding, sort of at roughly, you know, is trying to learn representations such that the geometry of this embedding preserves some sort of relationship. So let's define a relationship for local learning embedding. So let B of I uh, denote the B nearest neighbors you know, of, of X of I. Right? Um, uh, this, and B is a tuning parameter of the model. The assumption is that the neighbors of X of I are approximately linear. That's the, that's the key modeling assumption. So if that is the case, then x of i can be written as a complex combination of all the, all, all the x of j's in b of i, right? All the neighbors of, if, if, the, if the neighborhood of x of i, all the, all the points in this neighborhood look approximately linear, and let's assume that it is linear, then we can write it as a complex combination, right? So if w i j is some sort of coefficient matrix, then the, the basic idea is that x of i is approximately equal to some convex combination of its neighbors, right? where the summation of these coefficients add up to one. That's what it means to be a complex combination. So just a simple, you know, 2D to 1, 2D example, you know, if, if x sub i lives on this quadratic curve, right? Um, so this is a 2D example, then b, then b of i is sort of you know, the, the two closest neighbors of x sub i, then the assumption is that x of i can be approximately represented by a complex combination, like, you know, something close to the average. Although it can be different for each x of i. Right? The, best, the best set of coefficients can be different depending on what, what the actual neighbors are. So how do you choose the size of the i? Uh, that is a tuning parameter, and uh, it depends on the density of your sample, right? So. Um, Hold on to your question. When I get to some pictorial examples closer to the end of this, this part of the lecture, it'll become a little more obvious with the, when you see the pictures. Um, but the, I guess the basic intuition is that if you have a lot of data points and you're, you want to be very accurate, then you know, your B can be quite small. If you want to be stable in your estimate, B has to be large, but then you oversmooth. Right? Um, but that'll become clear sort of pictorially at the end of this part of the lecture. Yeah. Sorry, what do you mean by B? Uh, so the definition, so the assum this assumption formally means that x i can be written as a complex combination of its neighbors. But a function is completely linear if it can always uh, 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 a surface is 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 is, uh, is linear everywhere if it can be written if, if any data point on the surface can be written as a complex combination. All it can be exactly recovered as a complex combination. Of in this set, there are B neighbors, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, how this, how you, yeah, how you assume this process works is there's some low-dimensional manifold in some high-dimensional space. You observe, you have training data sampled IID from this low-dimensional manifold, and you want to recover a parameterization, a low-dimensional parameterization of this of these data points, such that the coordinate system here, you know, such that we recover, yeah. yeah. So if, so here the, the assumption is that well okay this you know this curve this this manifold is low curvature right and so maybe we can make the assumption that if we have enough samples in this small window things we could just assume it is linear or close to linear and one one of the implications of something that's linear is that it's a plane right and therefore um, things can be written therefore if it's a plane if it's planar then any data point can be written as a convex combination of its 
of its neighbors. Spanned by the neighbors as neighbors. Yeah, it's spanned by its neighbors, right? You could represent this data point as a span of its neighbors. Yeah. If you choose too much points, then the linear representation will not be unique. So that's right. I, I think we have some stability issue. Right. Uh, I there's a few ways to deal with that. Um, I don't recall exactly which ways in, I, I included in this lecture. We'll, find, we'll, we'll, we'll discover together which, how we deal with the stability. Um, I believe, I'm pretty sure we just use the eigen decomposition pseudo, pseudo inverse is the standard way to do it. Okay, so given the set of neighbors for every data point in our training set, so does any, any other questions about the setup of the problem? Okay, so given a set of, so we define a set of neighbors, and the, the number of neighbors is a tuning parameter of the model of every data point. Then we want to, we want to find the best, step one is to find the best uh, linear, a convex combination a reconstruction of each data point as a convex combination of its neighbors. So what, what does that mean? Well, under the squared loss of the original high-dimensional uh, features uh, feature representation, um, this is basically the objective. Find the W matrix that minimizes the objective, which is so just the reconstruction error of each xi given some convex combination of its neighbors. And the convex combination constraint is here, right? It has to be, uh, the sum of these has to be one. Uh, just a little bit of just algebra, um, like this, like this. Since this since this sum sums up to one, we can move this inside the summation. Um, this equals this transpose itself. And this this equals this formula, where c equals c is the, uh, looks like this, and so you can write it like this for every i. This is the this is everything here is inside the summation. Index by i. Right. Question? Yeah. Don't you want w to be always positive for, for the combination? Yeah, so I don't believe in this version they actually enforce that w is guaranteed to be positive. Like this, I think some versions do actually enforce that w has to be non negative. Uh, I don't recall this. If you don't care, you just care about linearity, not indexing. So the fact that the fact that the sum of the w's equal to one is a is in some sense a form of regularization. So I should mention that, like many things in machine learning, these these constraints and this these formulas have multiple interpretations. Right? Yeah, and so fact, there's different ways you can interpret it. In fact, we should not impose a non-negativity for w because. If the point is on the edge, and the width that's right. The reason why the reason why they don't impose non-negativity is because if you're on the edge, yeah. and you impose non-negativity, you're screwed. Okay. If you're at the edge of the manifold mm -hmm. and you impose non-negativity, you're screwed because you're not you you're not actually within you're not actually in, on the interior of the span of your neighbors. Okay. Right? You're at the boundary of the span. You're at or beyond the boundary of the span of your neighbors, depending on how, depending on how you. Think about span. Um, yeah. So this is the so so you know this is just some um, so 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 one thing to note is that this c can be precomputed because the x's are given, right? So after you precompute the c's, this is all we have to solve. And uh, we do we solve this subject to this constraint uh, via Lagrange the method of Lagrange multipliers. You know, this is an example. Um, uh, you know, if you're, this is the objective function. This is the minimum unconstrained minimum, and this is your current point. If we want to go this way, this is, you've seen this before. And if we have a constraint that the you know the L1 constraint that the sum of its components have to be one, then you know at, at the boundary you walk along the constraint until you find. A, uh, you find a point where some gradient of the surface of the constraint boundary matches the gradient induced by the loss function, and that is your optimal solution. 
So before we were just saying the sum, and now we're saying the actual norm. Before we're saying the sum of the w's lose one, now we're saying the norm, the one norm is. That's the same. Well, it, 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 there's absolute values for the norm. You are right, because I was lazy and just copied this slide from uh, earlier in the class. This class, by the way, is a bit sharper than the class last year. <laughs> I've seen a lot more bugs in my lecture. So you're right, um, and, the, the, and the reason why it's okay is because I use an, inappro I use an inappropriate example of Lagrange multipliers when I should have been using another different example. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is Lagrangian. I won't, I won't to make you look at all the details. You can look at yourself in your leisure, but there's, you manipulate the Lagrangian, and this is the optimal solution. Okay, so one nice thing about this is that you know, it's, it's basically close form. It has some summations involved, but it's basically close form. Yeah. So you can be efficient computing. Some other nice properties, it's in this, uh, this, uh, this uh, solution is invariant to rotation, scaling, and translation. It preserves this prop this, this uh, property is preserved. Okay, so this, this is the story so far. Um, we want to find a locally linear, we want to solve for the locally linear embedding of, uh, uh, which is basically a low dimensional parameterization of uh, discovering a low-dimensional parameterization of a set of data points that we believe is, is lies along a low-dimensional manifold, or approximately lies along a low-dimensional manifold in some high-dimensional space. Step one is to def define what it means to be locally linear, right? Given our uh, sample of training set, we don't have the entire, we don't have the entire, uh, we don't have infinite samples. We have finite samples. So first, we need to formulate what it means to be locally linear for each data point. And we do so by solving this optimization problem to get a W, and this is the solution. So what this gives us is a handle on what it means to be locally linear for every data point. Right? And we want every data for every data point i in our training set, we want it to be close to. Uh, we 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 we've, we've decided that it, it's it's local linear property based on the statistical sample of training data that we've received is this combination of, of its neighbors. That's what we, yeah. So we need to pick the dimension of our manifold, right? Yes, that's another tuning parameter, yeah. Um, so, uh, which gets to the next point, right? So our goal is to learn, our ultimate goal is to learn a U, which is a low dimensional embedding, such that local linearity is preserved. We formally define local linearity for every data point as, as using, this, using this W vector for every, uh, for every data point out. Right. And so this is the actual learning the embedding part. Right. Given W, which is in the high dimensional space, the best linear, uh, the best linear reconstruction of every data point given its neighbors, now we want to find a low dimensional, a low dimensional U that has you know, the same property. Right? So now W is fixed. Now we want to find uh, a low dimensional embedding representation of every item such that it is close to uh, the same linear co convex combination of its data points. And this is what preserves the local geometry of the, uh, this is what preserves the local geometry of the, uh, of the coordinate systems from, say, three dimensions to two dimensions. The local linear geometry. Okay, so we can you know enforce some constraints because this thing this this whole thing again is you know we could shift it all up, shift it all down doesn't doesn't make a change the objective function, so we could impose some constraints to keep it to keep the solution uh, unique, and uh, you know again I won't sort of make go through all of that you can go through this your leisure or you could you know check out this website which has more details. Uh, but the basic idea is that we could rewrite this as the trace of the whole U matrix or every column 
is, is a data point, corresponds to the embedding of a data point times this m times u transpose or this m is equal to this, this guy. Since w, since the row, since either the rows or columns of w sum to one, this is this is a positive semi-definite matrix. And suppose we wanted to learn just the one-dimensional embedding. The best, the best one-dimensional representation of all your training sets, of all the entire data points in the training set that minimizes um, you know, this objective function. Right. Well, uh, it's the principal eigenvector of the pseudo inverse of that. just solve this more or less using a simple MATLAB um, command. So to recap principle component analysis, if um, M is the matrix that uh, this matrix that we care about, we can decompose into V and it's positive semi-definite, so it's, it's symmetric positive semi-definite. Um, and you can decompose into V lambda V or lambda is a diagonal matrix. Either of non of net, non negative elements, some of which can be zero. The pseudo inverse is defined as the pseudo inverse is it, uh, forget this, the formal name, but this version variant of the pseudo inverse is basically saying, uh, you know, we take the same formulation, we just invert the non zero elements of this lambda matrix, and that's its, so m is this, this m this is the pseudo inverse of this. So that's what you, that's what. And if you multiply m with its pseudo inverse, you get um, you get something that looks like this. So normally, if, if 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 m was full rank and was invertible, m times its inverse would give you the full identity matrix. This gives you the partial identity matrix. So, uh, but that's just an aside. Uh, so the basic idea is we've you know we've defined this local linear relationship between data points using their high dimensional representation. Now we want to find a low-dimensional representation that's given high-dimensional representation given to us. Now we find a, want to find a local a low-dimensional representation because it's automatically that preserves these local linear relationships. And if we, that representation is just one dimension, uh, just just a one-dimensional representation, then it's just the principal eigenvector of this particular matrix that was constructed from all the relationships, local linear relationships that we learned. And in general, for for general you know, k-dimensional uh, embedding, it's just top k principal eigenvectors. Yeah? In fact, we are solving the minimization problem, and uh, suppose k equal to 1, u is just the eigenvector corresponding to this modest eigenvalue of m. That's right. And uh, m, if it is, like, it is not invertible, then why don't we just choose the eigenvector with corresponding to the zero eigenvalue? It has to be the smallest non-zero eigenvalue. Why it it must be this? Why it must be okay? So let me go through the um right. Why it must be? Let me let me try to see if I can help we can figure this out together. So trace um, so argument of trace. So I take the derivative of this with respect to u. <coughs> For the minimization problem, I, I think the minimizer should be the eigenvector with respect to the zero eigenvalue. So, Space. Yeah, I think I it, okay. I, I, I see your question. Um, I may have omitted a constraint yeah. from this paper that makes that not a valid solution because uh, that, that gives you the general solutions that, that's not interesting. Um, let me think about it for a second. Um, let's see. 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 Let's then I minus W. Yeah. So also, yeah. I minus W is in the U is in the W. 
the U is in the null space of M. When the U is the eigen vector of W with respect to eigen vector 1. So what, ha what does it mean for M to not be positive and definite? It means, it means that this matrix W, the solution that I found. Oh, I see what it is. So what? WI, the only way for like, to get a zero eigenvalue is if WII is 1, <coughs> right? Which can't happen because... No, which means U is the eigenvector. WII, WII is, is by definition zero from the previous solution. Yeah. Um, WII is by definition zero. Yeah, because we, we, otherwise you just yeah. use that point every time. Yeah, yeah. So if WII is by definition zero and WI is sum, sum to one, then <coughs> M, is M guaranteed to actually be positive definite? <coughs> Okay. Is it the case that a zero eigenvalue actually transfer a fake dimension that if you choose like a zero eigenvalue, you're actually parameterizing using less parameters than but it's possible. But I think the actual dimension is the number of non-zero yeah. eigenvalues. What I want to add. Sure. Yeah. So this seems very similar to principal component values. Yes. Except that there we go with bigger eigenvalues, here we're going with the smaller eigenvalues. It's because uh, it's because um, in principal component analysis you're trying to minimize um, you're trying to uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, So this is related. So whenever you see some, let's see, four more putting on this, people are putting them in the spot that a lot today. Um, <laughs> um, uh, in principal component analysis, uh, you want to minimize the reconstruction error of a projection of your data, right? In this type of neighborhood reconstruction, you want to minimize the, recon the reconstruction error of a linear combination of your data of your neighbors. So it's a little bit, the objective function is different. So principal component analysis, you have a, you have a, you have, you're given a data point. You're given, you're given either the full covariance, the co covariance matrix, right? Or you're given, the, you're given data points from which you construct the full covariance matrix. And you, then you want to find a low dimensional uh, deco decomposition of the covariance matrix that minimizes the reconstruction error to the covariance matrix, right? Um, so that, give, that leads to the principal eigenvectors. That, that leads to the principal eigenvectors of that covariance matrix. Here, we're trying to find a U. We're trying to find, minimize the reconstruction error of some defined set of neighbors of each data point to itself. And so that leads to this matrix. We're not actually trying to find the minimum, uh, the maximum reconstruction of, we're not actually trying to find the um, the, 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 the projection, the low rank decomposition of this matrix that minimizes its reconstruction with itself, right? We're trying, so in principal component analysis, uh, this minimization problem becomes a maximization problem. And here it becomes a minimization problem because we don't actually care about this matrix, we care about this, this objective function. This is just a compact way to write it. So it turns out that in many cases, when you write something when you, when you have a definition of this form, and this happens in cases where you have to, like, in, in cases where you have to do like graph, um, um, what's it called? Um, I forget what it's called. <laughs> uh, but in cases where you have to sort of uh, solve this, solve, solve, uh, solve a minimization problem that looks like this, um, in, in this form, the solution is typically one of the smallest eigenvectors of this of this matrix, which is intended to solve this problem, I know that that was not actually a rigorous answer because um, I'm having trouble coming up with one in real time. Um, but if you look, if you go to Wikipedia and look up graph Laplace, um, it'll it, it'll have a derivation of this. So one thing you can see is that the only eigenvector 
the only thing that can be the null space of M is an eigenvector for W that's just an eigenvalue one. If that, and so can W have an eigenvalue of one? And M have an eigenvalue? No. no. So no. then, so then you know it's positive definite. So M actually has positive definite. Then there's no need to use pseudo inverse. There's no need to use pseudo inverse, right? Yeah, yeah. So you just do that. That's just a fast. That's just a fast way of inverting if you have the decomposition. Yeah. Okay. There's no need to use pseudo inverse, so I should simplify this slide. Okay. So just to recap, there's two steps to local linear embedding. Uh, we're given a training set of high-dimensional data points. And we want to compute a low dimensional representation of these data points that preserves the local linear properties of this high dimensional data point with the assumption that it, lie, that it actually lie, at least approximately lies in, in a low dimensional manifold in this high dimensional space. Step one is compute, uh, define what it formalize what local linear means for each data point. And we need to do this because we're drawing samples from this training set. We don't, we don't have sort of you know, perfect coverage over the entire surface that we're trying to find the low dimensional representation of. We just have stochastic samples. That's why we have to do step one. Given, and so what step one basically says is I want to find a W that, that defines the local linear relationship between of, of the neighborhood of every data point inside. Then, given this W, which defines the local linear relationship, I want to compute a low dimensional representation of every X such that um, it, it also such that it satisfies the same property. So here's some results for k equals two. So the original distribution, the original, uh, the original data set here for the visualization is three dimensional. So it's not you know particularly exciting, but you know it's it's one that one can visualize. You draw two thousand samples from the uh, two from this uh, from this 